800 miles north of Thebes lay the capital of the Hittite Empire, sworn enemy of Egypt. It was here that two messengers delivered a letter from an Egyptian queen. Discovered in Turkey a century ago, the letter paints a portrait of a desperate woman. Experts believe that woman was Anka Tsunami. I am afraid. My husband died. A son I have not. But to thee they say the sons are many. If thou would give me a son of thine, he would become my husband. But why would Tutankhamun's widow do the unthinkable? appeal to Egypt's oldest enemy for a husband. This is unusual for an Egyptian queen and even an Egyptian lady from the Kuman people to marry someone who is not an Egyptian. An Egyptian man can marry a foreign girl, but an Egyptian lady will never marry a foreign man. She reaches out as far away as she can to a traditional enemy. What does this tell us? She felt very, very compelled to do so. That causes a great deal of suspicion. With no children to inherit Tutankhamun's throne, Akhenaten could well have been his rightful heir. History has shown that females have also served as pharaohs. In regard to Akhenaten, uh, she had the ability, in reality, to become a pharaoh herself. Yet the queen portrayed in the letter is a frightened widow. Suspecting a trap, the Hittite king declines to send a son, prompting her to send an even more desperate appeal. Had I a son, would I have written about my own and my country's shame to a foreign land? And in the final line of her letter is a pivotal clue. Never shall I take a servant of mine and make him my husband. Anka Sinaman's letter states that if the Hittite king did not send her a prince, she would be forced to marry a servant. But which servant? Cooper and King have their suspicions. Here on the walls of Tutankhamun's tomb, they believe they found the proof they've been looking for. Look at this, the opening of the mouth ceremony that we've read about and, and learned about. Taking place after death, the ceremony sees the soul of the deceased reborn. For a pharaoh, the ceremony was performed by the heir to the throne. Performing it for Tutankhamun is I. I is not supposed to be a king. Uh, by the Egyptian order that he cannot be a king, he's not from the royal blood, he's only a priest. An explanation as to how I could perform this ritual was discovered by chance in 1931. A ring inscribed with the names of Akhenaten and I was found in an Egyptian antique shop. The detectives believe I was the servant Akhenaten wrote of with such dread that he forced her into marriage to secure the throne for himself. Through that union, I think I saw that as a political legitimization of his uh, rule. The detectives discover something else strange about I's role in Tut's burial. This tomb was never intended to house the boy king's mummy. So Cooper and King investigate one last clue. The tomb Tutankhamun had always planned to be buried in. The interesting thing is that uh, Tut was planning to be buried in the same location as his grandfather. And don't you find it peculiar that his wishes were not adhered to, that in fact it was I that was buried in his tomb. No structure was more precious to a pharaoh than the tomb in which he would spend his eternity. Tut fell victim to the worst kind of grave robbing. His very tomb was stolen. The thief, none other than his successor, I.